Game that we got to talk about, Nebraska and Northwestern played yesterday in Ireland, and we have to react to the whole game. We already have a video out on this channel sort of giving you our, uh, our Nebraska angle, if you will, and what this means for them and Scott Frost. Still going to talk about that, but this game as a whole was really a tale of two halves. Nebraska had them on the ropes early and then blow that lead and end up trailing into the into the second half, I should say. And there flashed a stat across the screen, said Scott Frost, 3-20 when trailing at half. And so for me, watching this game, believing again wholeheartedly that Nebraska still had the momentum, still had a chance to win the game, still felt like they had the better offense and would be able to create and put the pressure on them, I'm like, okay, great. Make a note of that. When they win this game, changing on the tide. That's going to change the whole complexion, the whole belief around Nebraska, right? Hey, they were trailing, right? Only won three games before in Scott Frost's time at Nebraska, and they get it done in Ireland. Not the case. Not the case. Some of the things that I was watching during this game that gave me some insight as to how this thing was going to play out down the stretch I really like to watch both sides of the line of scrimmage. So who's getting a push? Who's able to kind of dictate their tempo to the other program, more or less, the other defensive line or offensive line, whatever it is. And we can say emphatically, not just by watching the tape, looking at the numbers, Northwestern dominated both lines of scrimmage. I mean, you watch Ryan Holinsky back there throwing the ball. He had all day. I was a Pop Warner quarterback. I probably could have gotten the ball off a couple of times against that Nebraska front seven. And some of it's a testament to Northwestern because they had four or five guys coming back, had their tight end back, so they have some experience and some guys that are going to play on Sundays on that line. But for Nebraska, that was one of the things that I was expecting from them was to get a better push up front. Ocha Mathis, Stefan Wynn, guys that have played at a high level before. To not be able to even bother Ryan Halinski was a big deal in the past game. And then in the run game, Northwestern had two guys in Evan Hole and Porter that went for nearly 100 yards. Hole did go over 100 yards. They both were right around four and a half, five yards a clip. And so for Northwestern, they just continued to pound the rock and Nebraska just didn't have an answer. Now, what I was encouraged by early on, at least for Nebraska, was the way they got out of the gate. Trey Palmer looked like, at times, the best player on the field for either program. Like, he's a guy that, regardless of how Nebraska season goes the rest of the way, they need to spoon-feed him the football. Mark Whipple's offense, early on, looked pretty sharp. Casey Thompson making quick reads, getting the ball out of his hand. Early on, he really didn't miss too much. There was that one errant throw towards the end of the half, and then obviously the the throw to end the game that was just... I mean, you have to check the Nebraska plane for snakes because of the way that that ball bounced off his receiver's hands and perfectly into... Northwestern's linebacker's hands. I mean, that was just one where you're like, golly, golly, can we catch a break if we're in Nebraska? But other than that, I was like, Casey Thompson looks good. Casey Thompson looks about as advertised. Looked poised, looked like he had command of the offense for the most part. So the transfers offensively were gelling. Anthony Grant ripped off a run to put him up by 11 in the third quarter where you thought, okay, starting to lean, lean, lean Nebraska. But credit to Scott, excuse me, credit to well, credit to Scott Frost for the way they played in the first half, I suppose, a little bit and still end up trailing. But what I was going to say was credit to Pat Fitzgerald and his program. Because what I think you saw yesterday was a team taking on the persona of their head coach, Northwestern, all offseason. They're hearing about, wow, the offense was bad. Defense took a big step back. What's going on at Northwestern? We're not used to this from Pat Fitzgerald and company. What do they do? Just listen to it all offseason. They take it in. They absorb it. Go through spring ball. Go through fall camp. Keep it all in-house. Show up in Ireland. Do their thing. No flinch. That's the best way I would describe Pat Fitzgerald. No flinch in him or his program. To go into Ireland and be a two-score underdog and take care of business in the fashion that they did, you're up at half. Then you get pushed back down, down by 11, recover an onside kick. You have the opportunity to seize momentum, and they did. And we talked about it a little bit from Nebraska's point of view, but everybody today on Twitter is going to try and win the, the headline, win the meme, win the gif, whatever it is. I've seen the, the meme about Scott Frost with the McDonald's hat for his next job, and I think that's poor form, whatever you want to call it. But if Nebraska recovers that onside kick, if they execute that onside kick, 
how much more differently is the conversation today about Nebraska? And I know they didn't recover it, but ultimately, the pressure's still on your defense. The pressure is still on your program to find a way to get a stop. Okay, you got a short field, now what? You don't get a perfect set of circumstances in football. The most imperfect game in the world. Got to find a way to get it done. But going back to what I was saying about what if they do recover that, well, then you're talking about Scott Frost's wow, gutsy play. Gutsy play, but good for him and his football team realizing they had him on the ropes and they had to finish the game good for them. And honestly, as a former player, I'll even take this a step further. As someone who was watching Nebraska and borderline rooting for Nebraska by the nature of just the storylines that have gone on in Nebraska, just because of the way that honestly things have gone for Scott Frost and just you feel for Nebraska. Maybe rooting is the wrong word, but feeling for Nebraska and almost wanting them to get over the hump because I think that's good for college football. I didn't hate that call. I didn't hate that he kicked an onside kick. Now you hate the result. You hate the risk. You hate the fact that it was probably a little bit unnecessary. But when he explained it post-game, and even in watching it in real time, I'm saying, okay, here's a guy who, again, a program that we've talked about all off-season, got to have the killer instinct, got to find a way to get it done, got to find a way to finish teams off when they're on the ropes. Perfect example. You got them on the ropes. You're up 11. If you recover that onside kick, go up 18 points, Northwestern isn't able to just sit there and run the football like they want to and like they did to end that game. Northwestern strategy completely changes. And I think that could potentially have favored Nebraska a little bit. That was also evident. Northwestern was just the better coach team. We'll call it what it is. Holinsky was on fire, especially in the early going, especially when he had no rush. And Nebraska's defense was still trying to figure it out. You saw that busted coverage early in the game that, again, gave some more life to Northwestern. Stuff like that that just can't happen. And some of it, you say, is week zero. Some of it is jet lag. Some of it is new faces on your defense. But that can't happen. That can't be the way that you lose football games. It can't be self-inflicted. And that's the reason why I think you're getting so much pushback on Scott Frost this year, especially after this game, is it felt self-inflicted. And even though I don't hit the onside kick call, you still have to deal with the reality of the fact that, hey, you called an onside kick up 11 when you could have kicked it away and played defense, and now we're having this conversation after a blown lead loss. You have to deal with that. You have to live with that. If they kick it away and maybe Northwestern still goes the distance or get an explosive play and they still win the game, I mean, you roll with it, I suppose, but it's a much... I'm not even going to say it's easier conversation. We're not talking about an onside kick and questioning Scott Frost quite as much. Because remember, he passed play calling duties to Mark Whipple. And there was some conversation about, hey, we might need more cooperation on that side. I'm not too worried about that. It's week zero. You're going to have some kinks worked out when your head coach used to call plays and he's passed that responsibility off to another human being. And obviously that's hard to admit your fault and honestly fire yourself as the OC. That's hard. So there's some pride there that needs to probably be worked out but ultimately I think there's a lot to be encouraged about by Nebraska but the game to end the way it did just rips your heart out rips your heart out if you're Nebraska if you're Northwestern I'm excited to watch them the rest of the year tough team ran the ball Ryan Holinsky looks to have turned over a new leaf it's week zero we're not going to overreact too much but Northwestern is going to be a force at the very least, to be reckoned with. Are they going to win the Big Ten West? I don't know if that's even a conversation we need to have right now, but Northwestern is going to be a tough out no matter who they're playing going forward. So what does this mean for Nebraska? We talked about it a little bit in our earlier video, so go check that out if you haven't. I'm going to touch on it a little bit right now. Now you have to deal with all the conversation of, is Scott Frost going to be our head coach next week? I mean, are they going to fire him? If we lose to Oklahoma, is he out? How long do they? I mean, the, the buyout goes down in October. Is he fired by October? It's unfortunate, but you put yourself here, right? It's unfortunate that you now have to deal with this in your locker room, but you put yourself here. In some way, you expedite finding out what you're made of at Nebraska. Because now with all the external things swirling around, all the headlines, all the whispers, all the things that are going to try and seep into this locker room in a place like Lincoln, Nebraska, who live and die by how their Cornhuskers do on Saturday, you can't avoid those headlines. Now that locker room finds out, okay, is this pressure going to cause us to burst, break apart, start pointing fingers, lose our confidence, lose our head? Or do we say, no, forget that. We were up 11 points, a game we should have won. 
We have 11 ball games in front of us. We have Oklahoma here coming into town pretty soon. Two games in front of us we should win. Stakes go way up, but hey, boys, we got to flush that because we got a whole season to play. That's the approach you would hope they play. That's the approach you would hope they come to the table with. We're going to find out, though. Unfortunate, though, for Nebraska. Cannot say enough good things about Northwestern and Pat Fitzgerald as they win that game in Ireland. Going to foreign soil and winning that game 31-28. to Tough out for Nebraska. Big time showing by Northwestern. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.